Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing the behavior and body language of Riley Strain. Riley Strain is a 22-year-old college student who's been missing since March 8th. He went walking around Nashville alone and apparently intoxicated, and we're going to talk today about what we're seeing regarding his behavior and his body language. Before we get started with this, a couple of quick things. One, I wanted to make sure you know this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. These are just my opinions. Last thing before we get started is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. So what we're going to be looking at today is various clips of Riley Strain. We're also going to be talking about various pieces of evidence that have been found since his disappearance. I'm going to give you my impressions on what we're seeing. Let's just jump right in. So look at how loose his body looks. Now, this obviously is something that we associate with intoxication, whether that's alcohol intoxication or something else, we'll get into that. But he does appear very calm, very loose. His arms are swinging. His legs are stumbling a little bit. He does appear to be heavily intoxicated. Now, it's hard to tell if he's on his phone or what he's looking at or if he had his hand on his head. Let's watch that one last time. I'm presuming that he had his phone in his left hand as he was walking. A little bit hard to tell. Now, this next clip is significant. Let's watch this. Now, as he's running right here, he almost looks more coordinated than he did in the last video until he falls over. But I want you to watch closely right here. So as he slips and falls, we can't see his head. And my concern would be, my immediate concern is whether or not he got some sort of traumatic brain injury right here. Now, there's no blood or anything like that in any of the other videos, so he didn't have any sort of open head wound, but it doesn't change the fact that if he fell and he hit his head on the pavement, that could be a substantial contribution to some of his behavior later on. Let's watch this one more time. Now, part of what makes me concerned about this is how long he lays on the ground, and it looks like he falls on his side. One of the challenges when people are drunk is they don't often catch themselves. It's part of the reason why drunk drivers oftentimes survive accidents, because they're so limp. So if your reaction time isn't good, if he is already heavily intoxicated, he might not catch himself. His head could have hit the ground. Now, oftentimes that will lead to a head being split, but not necessarily. And closed head wounds are actually more dangerous than open head wounds. So it's possible right here that he, in fact, did hit his head. Now, I don't know exactly how long he was laying there. Even if it was just from what we saw, that was still a, pr a pronounced length of time to be laying there. Did he actually briefly get knocked unconscious? One thing a lot of people don't fully understand is that when people are knocked unconscious, it usually is very brief. If it's for any significant duration, that is extremely dangerous. So it's not impossible that we are legitimately talking about a concussion right here. But what we didn't see, we didn't see him holding his head, but we also didn't see him holding any other part of his body. You can see he's taking long strides here. His arms seem very relaxed. He's leaning forward. So one thing, he doesn't seem as agitated or anxious right here. He's walking quickly, but he doesn't seem to be scared. There's nothing about him that seems particularly tense. So you'll notice how slack his arms are right now. That tells us something about his blood alcohol content. If, for argument's sake, this is purely alcohol, we don't know that it was. It could be a concussion. There's other possibilities, which we're going to talk about in a second. But let's talk about this as though it is purely blood alcohol content. Now, various amounts of alcohol will lead to various levels of impairment. I think most of us understand that principle. A blood alcohol content of about 0.02 to 0.05 leads you to feeling calm. It makes you feel relaxed. You have slight motor disruption. That typically, for somebody his size, would probably be one or two beers. So when we're talking about three or four or five beers, then we're getting into a blood alcohol content of 0.06 to about 0.15 for somebody his size. That's when coordination starts to go more. Walking straight is going to be more difficult. Your speech might start to get more affected. This is when it would be entirely unsafe to drive. You can't drive when you've got a blood alcohol content of that. And then when we go above that, we're talking about 0.15 to 0.3. This is six beers and beyond for somebody his size. 
depending, we all metabolize a little bit differently, but we're talking about a lot more alcohol at that point. That's when things to get, tend to get a little bit more dangerous, more severe motor coordination issues. Then you're going to be talking about getting into accidents, falling down, having much more profound issues with memory and judgment. Based on what we're seeing, based on the coordination we're seeing, I would judge that his blood alcohol content was probably somewhere in the range between 0.1 to 0.25. We're not seeing him just constantly fall over. We hear him in a couple of minutes to where he's actually able to speak without slurring. So I don't think it was 10 beers, but it also seems like it was more than just a couple. So we're talking about a range of somewhere that has fairly significant impairment. Now, the other thing that we need to consider with this is whether or not he takes medication, because there are a lot of medications that can impact how alcohol works on the body. Benzodiazepines, for example, like Xanax or Ativan or some of these different medications for anxiety. I don't know anything about his psychological history, but it's something that people should consider that do know him or that do know his psychological history. Whether or not he was taking medications, because if you mix one beer with a decent sized dose of Xanax, you're going to have somebody who has much more severe motor coordination issues than someone who just had one or two or three beers. It's not like one plus one when it comes to benzodiazepines and alcohol. It multiplies. It gets a lot more significant. So something that's really important is to understand how many, how much alcohol did people see him consume? Obviously, it can't just be one beer. That wouldn't make any sense. And if that truly is all people saw him consume and his friends didn't see him drink before going to the bar, which would not be unusual at all for college students. I went to UGA. I did the same thing. But if he didn't do that and he really did only have one alcoholic drink, that absolutely could not explain the behavior we're seeing, at least certainly not from a blood alcohol content standpoint. So right here, he stops and appears to look at the person that was walking behind him. Whether or not he said anything or is just looking back at, the back at them, they appear to be looking directly at him. So it does seem to be that there's at least eye contact being made here. Why that is, is unclear. And once again, this may speak to the level of intoxication or the level of impairment we're talking about. Because then he, he, he looks past the person, they walk by, and then he turns around again. So it seems like maybe he was looking for somebody. And if he's looking for someone or he's trying to find people that he knows, this does speak to a higher degree of intoxication. When we talk about that between 0.10 to 0.25, which like I said, it's just an estimate. That's just my guess. I'm not insisting that's correct. But if he's doing that, we're talking about the upper end of that. We'd be talking about someone who is quite intoxicated or who is quite impaired. Now, keep in mind, he may have also hit his head. So he may genuinely be confused. He may genuinely be having motor coordination issues because of that. So this may not just be alcohol. Now we're going to watch a short segment of police body cam footage where he actually interacted with police very briefly. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Now, if you watch his body language right here, his arms are a lot stiffer. He's walking a lot more carefully. Seeing police officers can oftentimes have this effect. We tend to go into that freeze, flight, or fight state. We don't want somebody to know that we're intoxicated, so we do freeze. So that does show some, some awareness that he doesn't want to be seen by police right then. Not because I think anything nefarious is going on, but I think that if he is in fact drunk at that time, you don't want to be arrested for public drunkenness. And he was able to coordinate himself well enough and respond well enough to not slur, to not trip up, and to appear fairly normal as he walked by. So that does speak to his ability to, if not just only briefly, appear sober. So... That also speaks to the fact that he was not intoxicated at like the 0.3 blood alcohol content level, that it's somewhere in that mid-range there. So there's a couple of other pieces from this I wanted to talk about before we talk about some of the conclusions that we've come to. One is the text message that he sent. Apparently, there's a female friend of his who had asked how his night was going, and he texted back, good, L-O-P-S. Now, the way I translate that, I looked at my phone, I looked at my keyboard, I tried to figure out what different things would make sense to type because it obviously did not autocorrect, L-O-P-S doesn't mean anything. To me, what makes the most sense is that he was probably trying to say good, L-O-L-S, or good love. I don't know how he speaks, I don't know how he interacts with people, so saying good love or good L-O-L-S, I don't know if either one of those is within the way that he communicates with people, but both would make a certain degree of sense depending on how he talks. My point in explaining that is that I don't think it was anything above and beyond him making spelling errors, maybe from being intoxicated. Maybe it was just a normal spelling error. I've done that kind of stuff as well, where I'll send a message that doesn't really make much sense, but I don't think that it was anything dangerous. I don't think it was sending any kind of message. I don't think it was shorthand for anything other than trying to send probably a fairly normal text message back. So a couple of TikTokers actually found his credit card right near the Cumberland River. The fact that only his credit card was found and not his ID or his wallet or anything else, 
I think is interesting. I do think that you need to find out from people who are close to him, assuming that anybody knows him well enough to know those kinds of details as to whether or not he's the kind of guy who would just chuck his credit card in his pocket or if he typically keeps it in a wallet because that'll help us understand how unusual finding that credit card is. What he would normally do versus what he did is going to be extremely important in trying to piece all of this together. So to summarize some of the biggest concerns, regarding his level of intoxication or his behavior, I have three primary concerns. One, that he may have had a concussion after he fell. Now, clearly he was intoxicated beforehand, but a concussion and a lot of alcohol is a very dangerous and scary combination. We don't know that he hit his head. There was no blood at any point that we could see. So whether or not he did, unless there's another angle, we're, I don't think we're going to know. But that certainly could explain some of the stranger behaviors that we saw. Another is how much alcohol did he actually consume? I presume that he would have, if he did consume more alcohol than he did in that bar, that would have been before he went. That other people would have had some estimate, would have seen, had some concept of how much he had to drink. And based on the behavior we saw, we're talking about at least four, five drinks, probably more, but we're talking about a substantial amount of alcohol. Now, if he really truly only had one or two drinks, there has to be other elements involved. There has to be, whether it's some kind of medication like Xanax or something else, something else would have to contribute to that behavior. And as much as I hate to say this, it's always possible that there's some sort of criminal activity that's gone on. That seems like the least likely of these possibilities, but he's still missing. They have not recovered him at this point. And I hope that he's still alive. I hope he's still out there somewhere. I know they're consistently looking at rivers and lakes and they're looking at bodies of water nearby, which is probably the most coherent thing to do given all of the information we have. But it still remains strange that they have not found him yet. There have been various reports that, from my understanding, are not verified yet, like somebody finding his shirt and other aspects of the case that I, I don't know or, or if they're more rumor or if there's any reality to them. Over time, I'm sure we'll continue to hear more. I will continue to watch this if we have more footage to analyze. I would certainly be happy to provide my two cents on those things. Hopefully, this has helped you better understand some of the various footage that we've seen. If additional footage becomes available or additional information becomes available, I'd be happy to analyze that as well. If you have any other questions or concerns or thoughts, please let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to include any questions you have in the next video I do about this. Last thing before we get wrapped up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, thanks for watching.